Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hobby. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about Broadway Limited's relatively new Paragon 4 Milwaukee Road S3 Northern Configuration Steam Locomotive and HO Scale. I'm going to update the Misery Index and I'm going to discuss how this model helped move that Misery Index. Then I'm going to spend some time talking about Broadway Limited and their place in the model railroading community and how they can probably improve their stature a little bit. So stay tuned! Let's revisit the Misery Index a little bit. I've certainly been having a good time. I've been trying to make some videos that I can post, but I think we've updated it just a bit. And yeah, Broadway Limited's gonna contribute to that move up. Ugh. I know it says Paragon 3 on the box, but this is actually a Paragon 4 locomotive. I purchased it through the Refurb store, and for some reason I guess they didn't have a Paragon 4 box, or they didn't want to give me a Paragon 4 box, so this is the one I got. I was super excited to find this locomotive. I didn't purchase it when it first came out. I didn't reserve one, but I started looking at it. At first, actually, I didn't like the fact that it was a fantasy scheme, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized that I did, in fact, like this, and I'm glad they made it. So I was happy one showed up in the refurb store. Like usual, uh, it has all these sounds, which I know a lot of people like. I certainly do. And this is, I didn't realize it, but there's like a pro setting and just a normal setting, and that was the list of the pro settings. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this out of the packaging and uh, there's a couple things I noticed kind of straight off. One thing I noticed when I opened the clamshell is the kind of overwhelming smell of uh, smoke fluid. I'm going to try to hold this up for you. Normally they put a little piece of cotton or something in there just in case there's some smoke fluid, but this time they didn't and it spilled out over the boiler. I'll try to angle it around a bit, but it's it's really obvious to me looking at it, but it, it's hard to get on to the camera. So I'll see if I can angle this around and you can see it glistening. I, I hope you'll be able to see this, but it's there is a film of it on there and it, it definitely dumped out from the stack and I think you can see it there. I've purchased at least well, actually two other locomotives from the refurb store and they've always put something over there because I think the end user who returns it will in fact often have uh, smoke fluid in it and I, they usually know that so they try to cover it up to keep that from dumping over the model like it has here. It's a really nice looking model, there's no doubt about it. It's, re it's really heavy too. Um, so I will try to swing it around here as best I can, holding it in front of the camera. I, I guess I need a better angle to get my hands on everything in there, but it's certainly great. It's, it's a good looking model, tons of heft. Yep, it's got uh, traction tires on the two rear drivers, both left and right, and I assume it's going to pick up from all the rest, so that's really nice. Uh, in the past, Broadway Limited's been a little bit quirky about their pickups. Some of their pickups don't work great. In fact, when I pick up one of their Pacific locomotives, I automatically now put in one of their Go packs because I've just noticed their yeah their pickups are so flaky, um, and my switches are unpowered, so it causes a lot of problems. So I automatically do that. I shouldn't have to do this in a model so long here, so we'll see how it goes. There's no doubt that this feels just like a really high quality model when you look at it. Everything's smooth. Um, there's the speaker port, by the way. Every other Broadway limited steam engine I have has the speaker on the bottom of the tender, like I think almost all manufacturers do. Um, but getting back to this, you can see that there are cab details, they're not painted, but they did put in figures, which is something I really like. I don't like ghost trains, even though a lot of mine are. I definitely would rather have figures. Good looking coal load. Um, it looks about right. I've noticed some coal loads are too glossy or sometimes they're too matte this one looks just about perfect and got the little detail here like the I guess this was probably an add-on rear light and 
they've made the wire kind of squiggly because of that. I like those kinds of things. I like those attentions to detail. Good top detail, except you can see the film of smoke fluid that's poured out of there. It's, it's a little bit obnoxious, but it's all right. It's not a terrible sin. Now the northern configuration is my favorite configuration. 484 just looks symmetrical to me. It looks right, and this locomotive embodies that perfectly. I'll just show you some views of the locomotive here that are a little bit closer than me trying to fumble around with this heavy thing in my hands. In fact, after all these, I'll weigh this for you. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll run it at slow speed so you can see uh, how it works at notch one. Notice there's a little bit of noise in this and I've run it in, um, but it's not the quietest locomotive that I have in my stable, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and plunk this on the scale. I just need to make sure I get a good tear weight here because there's no way my little scale will support the locomotive I've put on there. It'll try to break in half. So if we plop it down and get this on here, it's a bit much, it's unwieldy. Get, there we go. So we're looking at 33.8 ounces, which is two pounds, two ounces roughly. And for everyone else, it's uh, basically 960 grams. So. Uh, there you go. Pretty good. Pretty good heft to it. Let's do a slow speed run and you'll see this isn't the quietest locomotive ever. I only really noticed it when it started from a dead stop and, and then after that it starts getting louder because of the chuffing and you really can't hear it anymore. Seems like the chuffing is pretty much synchronized. Uh, most modern locomotives from the factory do that. The only one that I've had that exception is that Brava that's now also gone back for repairs. I think we're doing pretty good here and it's certainly smooth at notch one. That's one thing I really like about this locomotive. All right, let's get it running and get you some sounds.
should be able to come out or not, but uh, that's all I got today. Or... Okay. Uh, I'll give you a holler after you get spider. Thank you. The consist I've chosen to run with this is a Walther's Milwaukee Road Hiawatha set. I know, I believe anyway, that this ran with the diesel locomotives, but I like it so much. I decided it would look great behind this locomotive, and I think I'm right. It's a good choice. I'll go ahead and do a running demonstration. Just notice when it starts, however, it has that extra noise that I kind of wasn't too happy about but it, it's not that distracting after it gets going so i'll see you after this enjoy
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the running of that model. And in a few weeks, I'll post just the run so that you can see it on YouTube and isolate it that way if you really like watching it. But now I'm going to go ahead and talk about <laughs> what it is about this cool model that moved the Misery Index. And you may have noticed um, that the smoke unit wasn't running, so you probably figured it out. Yes, another blown smoke unit. And I'll, I'll go into that right now. <laughs> All right, so here's the problem, and this is probably what happened with my reading T1 also. When we turn the power on, the smoke is on because BLI, unlike every other manufacturer, defaults their smoke on when it starts, and you actually have to press F7 to turn it off. I, I still hold that this is the worst idea ever. Stop letting the smoke unit be on by default. I pressed F6 there because I thought that was the startup sequence. Uh, yeah, but it, it doesn't affect the smoke, um, so that's why I pressed it. All right, after it warmed up, you can see the smoke unit starting to glow, and as I back it up, you'll see the fan unit works also. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press F7, which is going to theoretically turn the smoke unit off, but look for the glow. You'll see that it still stays glowing. I'll kind of wave the smoke out of the stack and you'll see that the smoke unit is in fact on although the fan has now stopped All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump the track power completely. And what you'll see is after I turn the track power on, the smoke unit will be off completely. So I'm not sure what's happening there. I thought maybe it had shorted and therefore, you know, it was just gonna be stuck on. But if you dump the track power while the smoke unit is quote unquote off, even if it's on, and uh, turn it back on, the smoke unit won't run anymore. So I'll turn it back on here and I'll show this to you again. So if you're happy with the kludge, this may be the kludge you're looking for. And someone else said that if I fully reset the decoder, um, the smoke unit being on all the time issue isn't a problem. They're wrong. I, I reset it and it was still a problem. This is the only way I've found to even come close to fixing it. All right. Well, just minutes after filming, this happened. The track shorted completely, and I thought maybe the pilot truck fell off or something like that and shorted it out, but nope. The smoke unit completely shorted and blew my track circuit breaker, and now it just doesn't work at all. All right, so you may be wondering why I stick with Broadway Limited and, and why I purchase any of their locomotives, even though they've done this to me so many times. I sent two back today. The reading T1, I had a nuclear meltdown, and Corium almost spilled all over my basement and I returned the S3 that I just told you about because it's shorted out. Um, I've actually had to return two others in the past. I've had a heavy Pacific that I sent back because anytime you looked at it the wrong way or as it was going down the track, if it just turned or tweaked a little bit or it ran over one of my unpowered points, it would completely cut out. In fact, I've had problems with several others of their Paragon 3 Pacifics and the way I finally just decided to solve it was to install GoPax. So in a way, I guess I've somewhat encouraged their behavior by doing that, but I also like running GoPax or um, any kind of current keeper in my locomotives anyway, so I guess it really didn't matter. I was probably gonna do that. So I returned the two today. I had a Chesapeake and Ohio J1 that I had to return. It was brand new. They sent me another brand new one, and that one also crapped out, and I had to send that one back to them, which they then sent to me again. 
So why do I keep doing this? Well, the answer is I don't always, and I am looking for alternatives. However, to their credit, they do offer the types of things I'm looking for. I actually like smoke units. I actually like running them. Um, I don't run them all the time, but I actually do enjoy them. I think they make my videos look more interesting, but I don't always give them more money. Um, recently, I purchased one of theirs, actually one of their older Quantum Norfolk and Western J-Class locomotives. I was waiting to see if they would come out with one, but I found one of theirs that was actually new old stock that was such a good price, I couldn't turn it down. And even though I like smoke units, I decided to go ahead and keep it because it ran well. I understand the Quantum DCC chip very well. I understand how to program it. So I'm not going to be giving them any new money for that particular locomotive. But there's no doubt that right now I'm still okay with Broadway Limited, and I think there are a few reasons why that is. The first reason that I'm okay with Broadway Limited at this point is because they're a company that's taking chances. They produce locomotives that I like to see, fantasy schemes and non-fantasy schemes alike. They're saying, hey, there is a need for these locomotives and we're willing to produce them, and even though every locomotive that they produce is a type of gamble. I actually appreciate that, and I appreciate them coming forward with things like the Commodore Vanderbilt that they're supposed to come out with here, although they've been promising it for a while. I appreciate that they're taking those chances. I think uh, American companies in general got a little bit stagnant and a little bit stale because they only wanted to produce things that they knew people would buy. A lot of SD40-2s, those kinds of things, a lot of E7s, E8s, a lot of F units. Uh, Broadway Limited is willing to step out a little bit and say, no, these are riskier and there may be a smaller audience for them, but we're going to go ahead and give that a try. I actually want to reward that in general. I think that's important. I think European makers are a lot better at doing that. And so I want to see other companies follow Broadway Limited's lead and I don't want Broadway Limited to fail in that sense because I think they can encourage other companies to do the same. The second reason why I still support Broadway Limited is they're actually good about repairing their items. They don't give me any grief. They sent me a, a return label. I'm able to return their products to them. And frankly, that does hurt their bottom line just as if I weren't purchasing anything else from them. Um, every time they, they have a repair from me or anybody, particularly on the core meltdown like I had in the T1, that costs them and it does impact their bottom line. Also, whenever I send back something to them, they'll know that this is a problem. Part of the issue I see is that people, hey, like, I don't run smoke, you should turn your smoke unit off. Okay, I can do that, but I'm paying for smoke. And not only that, it's not okay for me to pay for something and then automatically clip out $100 worth of product. And I've had people tell me that, just go in and cut the wires. Well, I can do that, but I think it's actually better to hold Broadway Limited responsible. If everybody runs their smoke units at least long enough to see whether they're going to melt their their boiler down or not, that will help them. And, you know, you have to think that if that keeps happening to a lot of people, they'll eventually not purchase Broadway Limited products or they'll let them know why they're not purchasing their products anymore and that could force a change. The third reason I continue to purchase Broadway Limited products is that I believe they're trying to make a change. I don't think they're making it fast enough, however. I think that they jumped from Paragon 3 to Paragon 4 pretty quickly to try to actually address some of the problems they've been having. Paragon 3 locomotives were sort of 50-50 from what I could tell. A lot of people had problems with them, particularly with the electronics, and I think they know that. I don't think they've been good about acknowledging it, and then probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that if they do that, they could possibly open themselves up to a lawsuit. But I think Paragon 4 was an attempt to at least acknowledge some of their failings and some of their faults and correct them. However, I don't think that's going to be enough. But I don't think Broadway Limited is going to be able to continue to do that. They are pricing themselves at a relatively premium level, but a lot of their products are probably somewhat mid-tier, um, particularly when we're talking about things like their Pacifics. And if we factor in the problems that they've been having, I think it's fair to say that they're running at about a mid-level quality right now, if not worse. What I think Broadway Limited needs to do is they need to take a look at other manufacturers that are producing things like smoke units and they're not having a problem. I have two Roco 
Berkshire steam engines that I'm going to talk about here fairly soon. I really love them. And they have a metallic reservoir to hold the smoke fluid. They're wonderful. They have a separate port that you put the fluid down into. And I just don't see how they're going to have any shorts. I have several Chinese locomotives that have smoke and they're fine. They don't have any problems whatsoever. I think they need to address these problems and I think they need to look at how those companies are doing things, if not outright license their technology so that their smoke units can be better. I also think that they need to fix them. I still don't think their pickups are as good as they should be. And I think they need to work on that as well. I'm not sure how much older technology they're holding over, but it may be worth their while to go ahead and spend some more money on updating just about everything, including the sounds in their models. I didn't particularly care for Paragon 3 steam sounds. I don't own any of their diesel products because I can get so many diesels on the used market and then just upgrade them as I see fit. I just don't see a reason to, but someday I will want to go look for those products, uh, for diesel products. I do own a couple of their electrical products, particularly the P5A. I bought the Fantasy Scheme New York Central and I enjoy it, but it does have some pickup problems as well. Not enough to really concern me. It's very rare that it'll have problems. I'll hear it kind of blank out a little bit on one of my switches, which again are unpowered. And I find it forgivable. And I actually like the sound of it also. Um, and again, there is a time where Broadway Limited took a chance. And I'm happy to reward that actually. But eventually this is gonna wear pretty thin on me, particularly if they keep doing this with their steam locomotives. I'm gonna get sick of writing to them, no matter how nice they stay to me, no matter how cordial they say to me, and send me return labels. I think that's all wonderful, but eventually it's gonna wear thin and I'm going to run out of patience. And not only that, there's a good chance that other manufacturers are gonna to start to catch them. I have good contacts with Chinese manufacturers and I know that steam is big in the United States because essentially they're all starting to produce steam locomotives for the American market. And this is going to be a big challenge for companies like Broadway Limited because they can probably do things cheaper on their end and they already have the technology that frankly works better than Broadway Limited. So I think they're gonna to have to be careful. I think it would be important for them to at least acknowledge in some way, hopefully that doesn't cause them any kind of problems to say, hey, we're working on this and we're getting better and we appreciate you as a customer. They don't necessarily have to give me anything or do me anything, although if they want to somehow help me bolster this channel, that's absolutely fine. But I think it would be in their best interest to go ahead and say, yes, there are problems. From the end user point of view, I actually suggest that if you're having problems, you continue to send them back. You let them know on their Facebook page and in other places that, hey, I'm switching to another brand or I would have purchased this, but I've had so many problems. I suspect you can also tell them, hey, you know, I'm never using your smoke, but in a way you've already given them money for it. So and I don't think that's really going to bother them very much. Maybe they're just hoping that, you know, in fact, their smoke units are so bad, everyone will just simply turn them off to begin with. And I'll be the outlier and other people who like smokes will be the outlier. But they're going to have challenges soon because, as I said, other companies, I believe, are going to start offering these things. I'm actually surprised. Um, the United States is a little bit behind in these sorts of offerings. And again, in China, they're starting to offer almost all new diesels, even with smoke. And again, I guess I get that you don't like that. Um, a lot of people don't like that, but that's okay because it's still optional. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. When I get it back, I'll probably run it some more and I'll take some more video of it. Hey, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. What have your experiences been with Broadway Limited? Do you, have you just given up on them? Do you continue to give them chances like I do? What's your take? And again, you can tell me, hey, you know, you're stupid for using the smoke. That's fine. That's your opinion and I don't mind hearing it. Just know that I'm of the opinion that actually having more technological options is good. I think Broadway Limited, if they want to set themselves apart as a premium manufacturer, they should do things like offer smoke units. And I think they should also make sure that all of their locomotives have current keepers in them. Of course, you'll be able to turn those off. They already have the technology to do those. If you don't want, if, you, if your power dies and you don't want your locomotive running off the end of your table or something like that, then you can turn that off. I think that should be a part of their premium mindset. Hey, all of our locomotives work well. They have premium features. 
and they all have current keepers and all of our passenger cars have lights, things like that, that will continue to set them apart. But yeah, once again, let me know your thoughts on this. And hey, maybe Broadway Limited will watch this video and they'll read all the comments. So the more comments you can make, the better. And I'd really appreciate it, once again, if you could subscribe. It really helps me out. It lets me know what kinds of things you want to view and you want to see. And hey, let me know. You can always go over to my Instagram page and see what kinds of things I'm working with. My Instagram works as a bit of a preview for everything that's going to be on this. It's just that my YouTube videos take a lot longer to make. And if there's something you see over there, hey, let me know down in the comments. Hey, I saw this on your Instagram and I really would like you to make a full video on it. So the next uh, models that will be up, I'm going to review Rapido's comment. The next models that are up, I'm going to review Rapido's comment cards. I'm going to have a quirky consist feature on Markland's Wabash limited edition set. And I'm going to talk about the Wabash Bluebird. And I am also going to cover Roco's two new Berkshire locomotives. I have them both and I love them both. And they're an example of what Broadway Limited could be. Of course, I have one more German locomotive, and that's that Pico, which hasn't gotten back to me with the broken smoke unit as well. But for some reason, I don't know why I find Pico more forgivable in this, um, even though maybe I shouldn't, since actually that's their second bad locomotive they've sent me. Um, and I've been waiting now over a year for a working version of that articulated German locomotive. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you later. And happy model railroading, everybody.